Hello, I'm Captain Hinnich, and in today's video, we'll be covering collecting food sources for survival in Northern Ontario during the winter months. I've always been a little reluctant to uh, cover this uh, topic because I wasn't comfortable with the subject. That's totally natural. If you don't feel comfortable with something, uh, the answer isn't to avoid it, but uh, dive in there. Do your research, go try things out in the field, and that's the only way that you're going to feel more comfortable with the uh, material and to be able to cover it in a lesson. Today we'll be covering how to uh, snare a rabbit. We're going to try our luck at uh, doing some ice fishing and then we're going to go in the field and uh, try and find some uh, edible plants that are available to you in northern Ontario during the winter months. Construct a simple snare. Today we're going to be covering rabbit snares. First, we're going to cover the material that you're going to need to set one up. So I've got my Gerber multi-tool, I've got a pencil, and I've got some 22 gauge brass wire. Wire is available at any hardware store. I picked this up at Canadian Tire, fairly cheap. I think it's about five bucks for a roll. Couple of uh, rules of thumb that I've heard from some uh, trappers and some uh, old time hunters is that you want to make sure that you're setting it in the path of the uh, rabbit trail and the size of the loop of the snare is going to be roughly the size of a uh, adult fist and you want to be about four fingers off the uh, trail or I would say another fist again right if you've got a really wide opening between trees and the snare itself you might want to put a couple little sticks just to make sure that the rabbit, rabbit is filtered into the actual snare. Uh, rough calculation, 25 to 30 inches long. Just a little wider than shoulder width was good enough. Take the uh, wire snip on the multi-tool. Give that a little cut like that. Next, what we want to do is we want to create the loop. So we wrap that around the pencil like this. Do a couple loops of that. Take that off and you've got yourself a nice strong loop right there. All right, just like that. Next, we're passing the wire through the loop. And we want to make something roughly the size of an adult fist and that should be big enough for the rabbit to slip his or her head through there. Make a little V to hold the shape of it. Just like that. That's going to keep the shape. And then, just as an example here, We'll use this little water bottle, pretty big tree that you would use for a snare normally, but you could wrap this wire around the tree, right? Tie it off a few times. Just loop it several times so that way it doesn't actually come loose. Off the ground, about the height of a fist, or else four fingers, like this. The shape is kept by the loop being in this little V shaped here. And like I said, if your opening is really big, you could put a couple trees into the trails, a couple small branches or twigs to actually filter the rabbit right into the snare. He's going to put his head, he or she will put his head in there. And once there's tension, it actually chokes off 
the circulation and the um, bunny uh, is left there in the snare. All right. Okay, so today we're going to try one out right on one of the main paths. Take some smaller stuff and just make it to that. You have to go through that snare. Okay, and that's another snare set up. We'll try that out. All right, so third snare location. And uh, it took a while, but we finally got one. So, caught him in a good trail. So what I'll do is I'll take him into the garage and uh, get him ready. And the next step is gonna be uh, showing you guys how to clean one of these, All right? Skinning and cooking a small animal. All right, so we're back inside. Uh, we brought the bunny in just to warm it up a little bit. That way uh, you can move it around a little bit more. Uh, and we're gonna do a field dressing. All right, so first thing is you take your knife. You can actually do most of this by hand, but uh, make an incision right near the legs. All right, so this is what we ended up uh, getting. So. A good uh, bowl full of meat here, a little bit of bones left in the uh, legs, and uh, the two uh, the two pieces off the back. So uh, great, uh, great little harvest here. Okay, we're out in the uh, backyard. We're gonna try uh, cooking some rabbit over our ember lit stove and with uh, minimal ingredients All right, so as if you were in the field uh, having to get some protein in you and uh, eating a rabbit put our little stove together first come on Looks exactly like a chicken wing. This would be awesome broth. Drink that as a warm drink. Warm you right up. Good stuff. All right, welcome back. Now we're gonna start talking uh, ice fishing in Northern, uh, Northern Ontario. Uh, we're gonna cover some of the gear that you're gonna need and then after that we'll go get some footage in the field. So, uh, start off with uh, some type of a fishing rod. It can either be purchased or else it can be made from uh, just a small branch uh, that you're going to get from the bush, uh, about 20 feet of line and you're good to go. Very simple hook, uh, that's all you're going to need. And then you're going to need some kind of bait. You can try with some artificial bait, anything flashy, anything colorful. Uh, I went and purchased some actual minnows, small shiners, not sure if you can see that in there or not. Those little guys are ready to go. Next you're going to have to clear the snow on the uh, lake so if you have a small shovel with you that's perfect or else you can just clear it with your feet. Um, now you're going to have to get into actually drilling the hole through the ice. We have about 12 to 16 inches of ice now so uh, you definitely need something like this. This is a manual auger. You can get a gas powered auger. This works fine. It doesn't take long to drill a hole. So uh, some very sharp blades at the end here, so use caution with that. 
Make sure you supervise uh, any young ones or people that aren't familiar with it and always cover the blades back up to protect them. All right. And some other things that are nice to have is a um, ice scoop so that you can clear uh, the ice from your hole and keep it clear. Uh, you actually have to do that quite a bit. Some other stuff, uh, make sure that you have uh, proper winter clothing obviously. Uh, a chair is always nice, even uh, an empty uh, five gallon pail works too. Um, so that's about it. So next step is to get out there and try and catch some fish. Alright, so we're set up by the inlet coming into the lake. My thought process there is that when the water is flowing into the lake, it's got to be bringing nutrients and some, uh, some feed. So you should have the small feeder fish in this location. And then theoretically you should have some large fish coming in to grab the feeder fish. Alright. So clear the spot with the shovel. Uh, you can easily do that just with your feet if you don't have a shovel. And now we're going in with the uh, manual logger. There's definitely like a full auger of ice here, so plenty of ice to be out here, all right? Here we are back out in the field and um, literally 100 yards from my home. Uh, just in this small area here we have access to uh, several edible uh, plant species. Uh, we've got the white birch, a uh, deciduous tree with uh, some properties in the bark, uh, in the inner bark, and uh, some great medicinal properties in the uh, leaves form of uh, uh, aspirin, uh, so uh, great for uh, pain, headaches, uh, basically just steep the, uh, the leaves in the uh, summertime, spring and fall, and uh, great for uh, headaches. Uh, also around us is uh, several uh, pine species, so we've got the red pine, the white pine, and just behind us in the same frame is a marsh area where you have access to cattails. Um, roots of the cattails are a great source of uh, starch. Uh, a little challenging to get to in the winter months, but uh, if need be, you could get in there near uh, fast moving water uh, uh, where the pond hasn't frozen quite yet. Uh, for the pines, we'll cover that in more details, but uh, great uh, medicinal properties as well in a uh, tea form with the needles for uh, any cough, uh, congestion, uh, any 
cold type uh, symptoms that uh, you're dealing with. Uh, also tastes great. The inner bark of the uh, pine tree, uh, so that's that uh, yellowish kind of amber colored uh, bark uh, right next to the wood. Uh, that can be stripped, dried, uh, then pulverized into a flower. So um, great, uh, great sustenance there to keep you going. All right, so here's an example of the white birch. Very easy to identify. Uh, great source for uh, tinder uh, to start your fire, right? So you've got that uh, very uh, easy to identify white birch, very paper-like uh, inner bark, good to use, and uh, leaves for uh, medicinal properties. Example of the red pine, uh, very long needles, and if you take one apart here, you'll notice that they are in a uh, cluster of two. You'll notice here that they're in a cluster of two needles. So that's how you identify the red pine. All right, so here's an example of the white pine. Uh, very similar bark, uh, coniferous tree in the uh, Pinus uh, family. If you take one of the uh, needle clusters off, you'll notice that they're uh, in uh, needles of five. All right. So a good trick for that is there's five letters in white, so uh, white pine. All right. Very similar properties as the red pine, uh, full of vitamin C and uh, great for any coughs, uh, cold uh, type symptoms. All right. Okay, so we brought some uh, white pine bow back with us. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to prepare the tea. So you grab a handful of the needles like this. I'm gonna break that up in your uh, cup. That way you've got smaller pieces in there. Don't throw any branches in there. Something like that. So a handful of these needles uh, gives you four times the daily recommended allowance of vitamin C. Right? There, I boil the water. If you're in the field, you're going to make sure you boil your water. Process, process it from uh, some snow and then you're going to let that sit for five uh, five minutes uh, steeping you can probably stir a little bit with a stick and uh, sit back and enjoy all right so that concludes this video uh, we covered uh, foraging uh, for food in uh, northern Ontario during the winter months reviewed uh, snaring and preparing a rabbit uh, covered a little bit of ice fishing and then uh, reviewed some of the uh, edible and medicinal wild plants that are available to you. So remember to get out there and practice some of these skills. And thanks for watching.